y'all. I know everybody's been asking about what it's like living in the RV and the few things you have to do. Today I was going to do a load of wash to show you, but before we do that, I just wanted to show you like the kitchen area when we're cooking and the things we have to move around. You do end up with, it is kind of limited counter space, so you have to be creative and move your stuff around. So if I was going to cook, I'd basically just take this and I put it over here. Usually throughout the week, the bed stays down because it's not in the way, but today's house cleaning day. It's a Murphy bed. Yeah, it's a Murphy bed, so it comes down. So it usually stays down and you still have room to get by to go to the bathroom. It's a little bit of a tighter squeeze, but it works fine. And when the bed's down, you can set stuff on the bed otherwise you set it up on the couch but today's house cleaning day so the bed is put up <laughs> so when we're cooking you basically you have this cooktop which good thing it's cleaning day because <laughs> um, someone didn't clean it waiting for cleaning day <laughs> <laughs> so and then you have the sink pieces <clears throat> that you can put on for extra counter space. You have a deep sink, which is good. And then you just put these right back in and you have extra space. Even in this drawer, they've given like a cutting board so you can use this to set stuff on if you need to. And also use it as a cutting board and you have your silverware underneath. So it creates a lot of extra space for you in a small space. So that's good. And you have, you know, your microwave up here. And behind the TV, you pop it open, you get some extra storage back in there. Right now on this trip, especially, we are learning about the things we need, the things we don't need. There's a lot of things you don't need. So you have more space than you think you do. Mm -hmm. So when we get back into town we'll put some of our stuff back in our long-term storage because we don't need to be hauling it to Alaska right. so that's it's been a big learning curve <clears throat> and you take notes of things that will be helpful along the way and create more space for you and the refrigerator and freezer area has been bigger than I thought it would be so that's great but we're going to do some laundry today. Is there anything else you wanted to point out about this area before we do laundry? Um, <clears throat> you'll notice there's no oven, so the microwave is a convection oven. So it bakes, cooks, and microwaves. That's kind of neat. I worry about it when there's a feature on it that breaks and you're buying a whole new, very expensive <laughs> convection oven. But, I mean, that's with anything, that's I life. guess. I mean, that's, that's in a house and an RV, things break, so you can't worry about that. We can talk a little bit about, um, this is like your console unit that monitors everything. You can see here we're, we're showing 13.6 volts from the solar panel. We are plugged into shore power, but it's still charging the batteries even though we're plugged into shore power. Um, this is the hot water heater, and you basically have two settings. Um, you have an eco setting, which it has a real small storage tank, and it doesn't come on unless you draw water from it. So it's like a hot water on demand system. I really like it. I think it works incredibly well. You can turn it on and within three seconds you can start taking a shower. You don't have to wait. Um, and you have your cable antenna. We haven't done a whole lot with this. We don't have an antenna on this coach so everything's cable. So if your site doesn't have cable you don't have TV. But our new Samsung phones do connect to these LG TVs so you can watch YouTube channels on the TV and broadcast them to the TV. We've also learned to download the network apps like NBC, A&E, and you can watch those, and that's all free. So we have not done a Wi-Fi or an internet purchase as of yet because we haven't needed it. Yeah, we like to spend time outside exploring, so you don't yeah. need to be watching as much TV. Yeah, we don't so sit in. Now, we don't sit in the coach, and it hasn't rained here except it rained overnight. So it hasn't rained here at all, really, except the day we went on the Tortugas. But it didn't rain long, and we were on the other side of it. So um, I don't know a lot about this. I haven't read about this, but I think it has something to do with the the generator, and then it does have a Cummins Onan. Uh, quiet 
diesel generator on it. We haven't had to use it yet. It does work. It starts, but I haven't used it. Even behind this TV, there's a little limited storage so this, that you can put a few items This back unit here. has too many TVs. There are three TVs on a 25-foot coach, but... This TV... The kitchen one is the one I think we use the most just because it's in front of the lounge chairs that we have stuff on right now. Um, this is the main bedroom TV. This TV pulls out quite a bit and you can swivel yeah. it. So if you want to watch TV while you're on the toilet, there you go. You can. It's big. I mean, it's really big and it has a sound bar system up there above it. And there's lots of space behind it. We don't even utilize all the space. We threw a DVD player back there and I think that's about it. Some cables. Yeah. But it's a good space. And you just push on it and it magnetizes. Just push it. It'll, it'll go click, click. Well, you have to swivel it correctly, too. There you go. You can hear it click. Um, one thing with these drawers, if you're going down the road and you start to teeter-totter left and right, these drawers will come out, especially if they're kind of heavy loaded. Um, we did put a safety child latch on this top one because that was the one we were having the most problem with. But we couldn't really do the same thing with the second one because there's no bar to latch on it latches onto this drawer Which we still need to figure something else out for yeah this so we got to figure something to else out. out there's so, something wrong with the latch underneath it must be because that's the only one that likes to fly out we did buy this unit used and it looks like they just put screws in here but i really didn't want to do that and then he had a bar that goes down the front but it's it's scoring up the the shelving so i didn't really want to do that either um so we're still working with that we did figure out our step issue though oh yeah we did if didn't you we? remember we called a technician which they're very helpful very the customer helpful. service is amazing so i'm very happy with that mm -hmm. and he did give you a solution over the phone yeah so what it is with the the just briefly i have the screen drawn in here mm -hmm. the, the screen is pretty neat Right here are the contacts for the sensor for the steps. So he says what this is doing is it's not making contact correctly. They're not lined up, so either it needs to be adjusted or the door needs adjusted. He said just take some aluminum foil, fold it, put it over the contact, shut the door, works fine. And it worked great. So I was like, hey, I like that fix. And then we'll align that when we get home and we got more tools and stuff to work with. So I'm glad that was an easy fix because that was really irritating. <laughs> Yes, it was, and it's dangerous and can cause a lot of extra damage that's not even necessary. All right, well, I couldn't help myself. I started I know. cleaning. That's you know? okay. People want to see real camping. Nothing is staged here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real deal. The real deal. Dirt and all. Yep. <laughs> this is a 12-volt refrigerator. I like the 12-volt refrigerator because then if you're boondocking, camping without shore power then the solar panels will run this refrigerator that's great because you don't have to run your generator to run your refrigerator and you don't have to run propane the only thing we're using propane for is for the hot water tank and it uses very little we just turn it on as needed and then turn it off when we're done so um as we may have mentioned before too is we take we stored this this is a styrofoam thing that it was packed in, so we kept it as a cradle so this wouldn't bounce around inside the, the shower unit, but we just stored it right inside the shower unit. Now we do a couple different things when we want to take a shower. We either pull it out and stick it here and it does fit here, or we take it all the way out here and set it in the living room, or if the bed is down, we'll just set it up on the bed. So we've done all three of those things, but we think this works best because you don't have to lift it or move it. You just plug it in. We carry an extension cord. It's kind of a heavy duty cord, but it's for everything that we may need it for. So we just use it for this and plug it in right here. Closest, yeah. closest when, plug. When we first started, we brought the machine out here mm -hmm. and we're doing it here, but it works even better just leaving it in the shower. So that's yeah. what we're doing now. Yeah, then you don't have to run the drain hose over to the shower. The drain hose can just stay right on the side right. where it is and it'll drain right everything out. Everything works great. Yeah. And if you look inside, you can see you don't want to overfill it. Yeah, but so you just full. put about that much in there. So this is the wash tub, and on this side is your spinner. 
So it's about half the size, but what you do is you take this out soaking wet, you put it in the spinner, and this thing goes really fast. I'm really amazed how almost dry it gets coming right out of here. And since you don't have much clothes in there, you don't have to use too much detergent. So you just... And then you just manually fill. <clears throat> it does come with a tube that you can put on either one of these inlets to fill the, the tank, but yeah, the this, tub... Yeah, this tube. Yeah, but... It's really kind of dumb. Yeah, well, you don't need it, especially sitting yeah. in the shower. Even when we had the machine out there, mm -hmm. this reaches. Yeah, we just use the actual shower unit, bring it down. You just lay it right in you there. Just lay it in there, and that's you hot turn water. Turn on your water. That's cold water. So you got, you know, we wash with lukewarm water. And you can just let it sit in there. Just let it sit in there until it fills up. Let that it takes fill up. About three to five minutes. It's not very fast, but. Don't walk away and forget about <laughs> forget it, of about course. It, right? <laughs> so I really like the shower. It's a step-down shower. And then look at this um, this little this door. It's kind of neat. I like that. It, it latches. I'm not going to latch it. My hands are the way. But it latches and it's spring-tensioned. So it just pulls itself back. And as it pulls back, it squeegees the water off the front and the back. And water goes right down in the tub. I can tell you one fail is what you can't see at the moment is the drain here in the shower. They didn't recess it so it sits up a little high so water you really have to work to get the water out. Hopefully they improved upon that in the future. My other dislike is this towel hanger sits so close to the toilet paper roll that your towel hangs over there. They should have put it up here yeah so and we got this squeegee here so when this the second person is done with their shower we squeegee the walls and then we squeegee the water down the drain the best we can and then it's almost dry so you can put the washing machine back in there and you don't have mildew that's an important thing when you're camping is to keep water where water's supposed to go and don't let water go where water is not supposed to go <laughs> yeah I try to keep everything as dry as possible and just be aware of everything because yeah. if something goes wrong you want to catch it right away right i think i'm going to move this higher at some point i wonder how it's attached if it's screwed in or glued i'll find it oh boy it looks like yeah. we won't do that right now yeah let's but not do I that right find now out. <laughs> i have to make improvements so with with the bed yeah like we said up and down there are two windows two small windows behind the bed so when the bed's up I close the windows um, the windows only open at the bottom in the whole coach so you can see you can see the windows here how they open the exit window does open a little bit larger than the crank window but that's as wide open as they get there are two ceiling fans they do not have covers so I may be getting covers for them um, and they only blow out. They only exhaust. It would be nice to have one of them blow in because when we get into colder climates, sometimes you want to bring the cooler air in um, and have one blow out. So ideally, I would like to get covers for both and maybe this front fan would, I, I would switch out this fan so it has a reversible fan. I have put one of those in before. They're not too hard. This one's pretty wired, so it should be pretty easy to put in. Um, I just have to take measurements. I think it's a standard size, but just to double check, a um, couple hundred bucks, maybe more, you get a reversible fan with a shroud. So that way you can run your ceiling fans when it's raining. And that's going to be a bigger deal when we go somewhere where it rains a lot. I don't know if this was in another video, but this unit comes with this, with this, it's kind of a double lined. And it's got magnets at the bottom, so it's weighted at the bottom. But this is where the front coach is. I'll just show you. Maybe messy. You store stuff there too. So there's the front coach. But what this does is it gets hot up in that coach sometimes. We block the windows the best we can. But what this does is one, it gives you a place to hide stuff that you don't need while you're camping. And then two, it kind of keeps it the air conditioning on this side. And it makes it much more efficient. It cools off very fast. This is only a 30 amp trailer. So there's one air conditioner unit. 
and it, it really cools fast. It's got ducted AC, but there's only one unit right there. We have not had to use the heat since we've been here, so I don't know that it works. I'm sure it does. I'm almost ready for a load. It's full now. Oh, is it full? I just wanted to show. So this is what it'll look like. I like to have a lot of extra water in there. But also, when I use this hose, which is the drain hose, I take this piece off, put in here, and then I run it back behind so it sits closest to the drain hole. Which I need to move all this stuff. And you just want to be careful where your drain hose runs and where your electric cord is. I have the plug still wrapped on the machine so it's up off the ground about a foot. I just like to put this up so out of the plug way. is off the ground about a foot back there and the drain line runs well around it and below it. You don't want to mix water and electricity so just be careful with that. Yeah, that's highly frowned upon. <laughs> if you want to. It can make for a bad day. <laughs> yes. So this little I like to keep it like right near the drain. Mm -hmm. Which of course now it's not behaving. Behave! It'll be fine there. Okay. So. You only have a few settings on here. So it's kind you have of gentle, normal, up. which I usually just keep it on normal. Somewhere between 12 and 15 will do you. And then you can lift this while it's going if you want to check out the action. Woo! That's pretty good action. It goes in both directions. Swishes it around. Of course, don't overload this machine. It's like any machine. If you overload it trying to save money, you're not going to get your clothes washed. So you end up wasting money. You can already see the water is dirty, so it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, taking the dirt out of the clothes. And that will go on for about 15 minutes. And then at the end of 15 minutes, you can see that I... You'll switch that middle lever selector over to drain, and that turns on a drain pump. We'll show you that when we get there. Alright, now that it's done, and I've had time to clean other areas while waiting, you can see the water's dirty. Now you have to drain it. So to drain, you just swap it over to drain. And you'll start to see it come out, and the hose is not placed exactly as I'd like it to be. It needs to be a little further back, but it still works. It gets really close. <laughs> if there was any extra water, it wouldn't work out. It seems to have just the perfect amount of water. It is slow in draining because that styrofoam is sitting on top of the drain. Yeah. But like I said, fortunately it's just about the right amount of water so that it doesn't start creating a huge mess. next thing you'll have to do after it drains down is you fill it back up with water, run it through the wash again so that it rinses it. You just have to keep an eye on the hose so you can tell when it's done draining. It doesn't have to be perfect. Does that look good? Yeah. Fine. All right. Then we'll just switch it back to normal, and we'll do the same thing with filling it up. Just lay it down in here again, and turn your water back on. Make sure it's not pointing up at you. <laughs> You'll get a special facial rinsing. 
and somebody will get a good laugh. <laughs> Might not be you. The whole planet will get a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll just leave that in there again and let it fill up. This time we don't add soap because we're rinsing, right? That's correct. All right. All right, we won't bore you with the footage of it filling up. We'll get back to you in a minute. <laughs> all right, now we've got it all filled with the water, as you can see. And we'll just shut it again. We'll leave it on normal. And for this cycle, I usually put it, I'll be put it between the six and the nine somewhere. Yeah, because you don't need as much swishing for rinse. Right. So again, it'll just go through and do all the action there, give it a good rinse. All right, we'll just let that be and we'll get back here in a minute. All right, so it finished with the rinse cycle. So now we're going to do the drain again before we do the dry. We did do a little modification because I did not like how high the water was coming up last time. In previous washings, I got the hose to sit back a little further so it didn't come up that high, but it didn't want to behave. So we're going to try a new thing on the fly and hope it works out good. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you'll see that it didn't. Yeah, it's so if you want to step in here and show, we're going to leave the drain. So we took the drain and we hung it on the side, which is how it comes. And it's going to shoot the water straight down. It'll go up and around the bend that you see there, and it'll shoot straight down in the back, you know, to the floor. We also took, we had like a hair drain cover on the drain. We took that out. Um, so maybe it'll flow better. We think the drain cover may have been um, restricting the flow of the water. So let's see what happens. I also think in the future that I'd like to cut some of this styrofoam out so yeah. that just sitting on the four corners because that's also restricting the flow of the water. Yeah. But let's see what happens. So we're just making little modifications. It did work the other way and it was fine, but we're just trying to make it a little bit better. We've only used this machine maybe two other times. And both times we had it like out in the living room area. So. You can see the water's going around the basin. It's working much better, I think, removing that drain cover was, drain a, cover was a huge thing. I mean, this shower stall is recessed. It's like a two-inch step down, and I think that helps immensely. And not having to move that drain hose is even better, too. Yeah, so. so it's just... We'll stick with this way. Just blowing it out the bottom there. You can see the water collecting. The water passes underneath the electrical connection by about a foot, so that's good there. I think it's a good use of space too, putting the machine inside the shower unit. Um, you know, because then it leaves this whole living room, you know, open area, and that's kind of nice. You gotta conserve space in a 25 foot coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm always looking for new ways to improve our storage options. If that cord, was, the electric cord, was just maybe about a foot longer, it would reach the plug out here. But it's a little bit short. Yeah, that water came up just where I don't want it to go past, so that was perfect. I want to allow for as much water to drain out as possible. Yeah, you can see it, it's going down now. Yeah, that was perfect. The other way just went a little bit higher. And that was causing a little bit of a mess. Let's 
see. Most of the water is gone now. Yep. So we'll go ahead and shut that off. And now when you're going to use the spinner, <coughs> you just need to make sure don't overload it. <laughs> that you do not overload it. You don't want it wobbling all over the place. So we'll just put in a few different items. I know when you're doing towels, that is a little bit rougher. So they call this a 20 pound unit, 20 pounds of laundry. What it is is 12 pounds in the washer and then 8 pounds in the spinner. And you can do them at the same time. You can have the spinner run the same time you run the washer. So when you load it, you just want to keep it in there as evenly as possible. They give you this little thing to put on top. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but we'll so, just go with it. We'll see how it works. And you can put it for as high as you want. I do it for the highest because you want as much water to get out of there as possible. <clears throat> it looks like the load is balanced. If it's not balanced, the machine won't allow it to spin that fast. It'll spin at a slow speed and it wants you to readjust your load. Yeah, so when that happens, you just go in and readjust it and everything's good. As you can hear, it goes pretty fast. You not lift the lid while it's running it will shut off and it is pulling air through it these vents um, do pull air you can feel the air moving through there and when you pull your clothes out they are almost pretty dry. dry then you can just hang them out on the line yeah. or <clears throat> around your coach whatever you have set up we do have a small drying rack today. We're gonna to put it outside. Usually we just put it inside and it's fine and put a fan on it and it doesn't take long to finish the drying job. But today we're gonna to take advantage of the beautiful Key West breeze and let it air dry our clothes outside. Okay, so our five minutes is up. Everything has spun. And the good thing I like about this is I don't have to go sit in a laundromat. So I can just do this while I'm doing other stuff. It runs in the background. I get back to it. So it doesn't matter how long it even takes. Now I know I can't demonstrate exactly how dry this is, but putting it in, when you take from out of here, there still might be excess water that you might even have to wring out into there and you'll get some water dripping. These are very dry. You can just hang these up for probably an hour and it'll be completely dry. Mm -hmm. But there's no dripping. You don't have to worry about anything dripping on the floor. So everything comes out pretty dry already. So now we'll just take them and hang them out on our little rack outside. All right. Okay, so here we got our laundry out here and we got a few pieces on the rack just to kind of demonstrate. This is our rack. And with this kind of sunlight and a stiff breeze, as you can see, this will be dry, I think, in probably about half an hour. This is our beautiful view. So now we've taken all of our laundry out and I just wanted to show you the water that's left in there. Whatever pieces are at the bottom, you might need to hand wring out a little bit before you put them in the dryer, just so it takes less time. You don't have to, I do. It will come out as it's spinning through the drain hose. But whatever little bit of water is left in the bottom, you just hit the drain and it'll pull it out as you can see you don't want to leave water left in there. It just takes a few minutes. Get that pump action. And you also want to remember after your loads, there's this little filter thing here, which is kind of like a lint trap. 
it doesn't catch much but you can see there's some dirt in there so you'll just want to take that and rinse that in the hose in between washings no big deal Once that pump gets going, it just sucks it all right out. It might take a minute or two to see the action, but that's the end result. Make sure all that water is gone. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this purchase, aren't you? Yeah, it's convenient. Yeah, for what we paid for it, I think it saves us about $15 a week and you don't have to go sit in the laundromat. Mm -hmm. So I really like that it's right here. You, I mean, being in the campground, your water is already free. Your electric's already part of your rent, so you might as well use it to its maximum. It's very convenient being right here, and you can do it whatever time of day you want, and you don't have to go anywhere. And you can do other stuff while it's going without worrying about sitting there watching your stuff in the machine and being in other people's way or things like that. So I'm very happy with it, and I would recommend it to anybody. Mm -hmm.